Hello, WAP Nation, and welcome to WAP TV, your source for all VHS news. I'm Brendan. And I'm Emily. Today, we have a WAMTastic episode for you, including an insight on Sarah Murphy's success in getting afternoon senior privileges. An exciting segment of Are You Smarter Than a Teacher? And a compelling story on the annual dodgeball tournament. There's a lot of exciting events happening at BHS right now. Have you heard of the newest project going on at BHS right now? I heard they're building an aquarium on the second floor. That's right. Joey and Nick investigated the latest project by the Environmental Club. Let's take a look at what they had to say. Here at Braintree High School, students in the Environmental Club are building an aquarium for the school. We uh, started doing more outdoor activities. We noticed a lot of kids are very excited about the local animals here, but they don't really get to see them. Basically, the Environmental Club is trying to create a aquarium slash terrarium that can exhibit some of the local species. Well, it began last year, and Mr. Weigel has a background to working with like fish and things, like aquatic things. When it comes to creating the aquarium, there are many aspects to be considered. The biggest thing we've really taken on with this tank is figuring out how we can bring out the local species to the whole campus. We also had uh, to build a stand. Um, Mr. Weigel and I worked on that with a bunch of students over the course of a few weeks. On top of that, we're going to have to get plants, and we're really trying to change the room down there so it's a nice place for people to look at the aquarium. But not all projects are without obstacles. I don't know, fundraising was a little difficult. We had to come up with all the money to buy the tank ourselves. Uh, finance, the biggest one, you know, if we had more money that'd make it really easy. Like, we have some nursery tanks and we have to be, put guppies in there to begin the nitrate cycle and then there are all these different aspects that we didn't really think about, like pH, so that takes a lot of Mr. Weigel's effort mostly and it's been good to have him help with it. The Environmental Club is also working with Project Proof to create the aquarium. Well for this project we really wanted to have a project of inclusion. We wanted to have a project where the mainstream students and the Project Proof students worked together on a common goal and we are also caring for the fish each day. We are responsible for feeding the fish each day and eventually we'll be working on cleaning the tanks. Project Prove is also helping with raising funds for the aquarium. So for our part of this, we are working very strongly on the fundraising aspect of it. We uh, have a very interesting fundraiser where students and faculty can sign their favorite SpongeBob character uh, and then put it up on our door. The Environmental Club and Project Prove are continuing to work on making an aquarium at Braintree High School a reality. Welcome back. Now let's take a moment to go over all the accomplishments our teams here at BHS have during the winter season 2015-2016 season. The BHS Theatre Guild put on a fantastic performance of Noises Off, directed by Dan Grigas and Michael Lacey. They won the preliminary round of the METG Theater Festival and will compete in the state semifinals on March 19th. The dance team won two New England championships. The boys varsity basketball team made it to the second round in the MIAA Division I South Sectional Tournament. And the boys ice hockey team were the number one seed in the MIAA Division I South Sectional Tournament. The girls ice hockey team has been awarded the 2016 James F. Malloy Team Sportsmanship Award for their work with the Special Olympics. The number one Lady Womps made it to the sectional championship after an undefeated season. And Anders Class made it to the New England Wrestling Championships. There's a lot of great success coming from our organizations. Now let's take a look at what Matt and Steven gathered on our annual dodgeball tournament to learn about one of our most looked forward to events. On Tuesday, March 15, 2016, the students of BHS participated in the annual dodgeball tournament. The dodgeball tournament was established by Mr. Coyne, and it has always been a popular event to attend. Well, it was created about 10 years ago um, just to create a fun activity for the school to get everybody involved in something. It we hit it high maybe two years ago with about 60 teams, and we had to completely revamp the whole thing and do a round robin into a 16-team a bracket. I think it helps because it's, it's very rare that everyone has a chance to come together for no reason other than fun. They don't have to have a lot of uh, athletic ability to be uh, play, and I think it's just uh, it's always been one of those sports that everyone's participated in through growing up through phys ed. I think they get involved because it's 
it's just fun to have something to be part of, and it's something that includes the entire school community. And getting as many students involved, getting all the different classes involved, and getting teachers involved. It doesn't really matter whether you're good or bad at dodgeball. I mean, it's always about having fun and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's just always the great thing to do. But every time I play dodgeball, it's been pretty fun. So it's only about like bringing people together and having a great time. We need the students for it to be successful, but we also get the students. The students are the ones that um, really work the tournament. They, they work the snack bar. They, they um, energize the excitement. The tournament itself, the whole day where students are wearing their they're wearing their jerseys or their uniforms or whatever thing they scrounge together the night before to all look the same. The electric atmosphere leading up to it, the day of especially when everybody's dressed up, I think is really fun. Just the fact that you can, you know, you can be free, you know, you can go out there and just kind of have fun. Well, I mean, being in the dodgeball tournament is probably one of the most fun things that the school has every year. We have teams from the community. We have the Braintree Police, the Braintree Fire, oftentimes the Army recruiters join us. Without everyone's participation, I don't think the event would be as successful as it has been. I just realized we have almost doubled how many people are playing, so I think a lot of those people ended up getting involved in the long run. That's the big appeal, having um, just everybody feel like this is something they can be part of. Uh, the purpose of the tournament is fundraising for the school, so we can have like you know better things and like better field trips and you know stuff like that. But right now, it's kind of just helping out. Um, the kids in the alternative ed programs. We raise money that we need money for, so we raise it for that. A lot of our kids are involved in the dual enrollment program at Massasoit, so buying books and tuition and things like that, it's helped with that cost. You know, it's electric. I get to just slaughter people. Um, you know, I'm kind of nice at dodgeball, so, you know, I, th I think it's a great time being in it. Where else are you going to be allowed to chuck a ball at one of your teachers? I mean, it's, it's just that idea of like, community and you know it's fun. 33 teams participated in the dodgeball tournament and the winning team was Team Blitzkrieg. Hello again and thank you for tuning in to WAMP TV. In our next segment of WAMP Talk, Paige and I asked students and teachers what they think the best organization is here at BHS. Let's see what people had to say. <laughs> This one is eSports Club because we have to play video games and we make new friends and we have tournaments where there's nice prize pools and we're open to new players and members to join. I think that the best student organization at BHS is our preschool lab because the kids get to work with like preschoolers and they get like hands-on um, time with them. <laughs> and it's really fun to do while you learn at the same time. Um, I'd probably have to say uh, probably the JV hockey team, you know. We're all a bunch of good guys, get along together. Um, we hang out outside of school. Um, okay, I think Best Buddies is the best student organization because it connects the buddies with mainstream students. Uh, the eSports club because you get to game hard. The best organization at Braintree High, I would think, is Music Tech because you get to have better appreciation for music and you just kind of put your own swing on the music I think that you get. One of the most important programs we have at this school is Best Buddies because it gives those students the opportunity to connect with kids they might not get to connect with and helps them get involved in the community more. Welcome back. Seniors have a new privilege this school year, or it seems they've earned their old privilege back, thanks to student body president Sarah Murphy. Eamon and Molly have more to the story. Student body president Sarah Murphy recently earned the afternoon senior privilege back for the class of 2016 in all future classes at BHS. We were approached this year by Sarah Murphy, who wanted to talk to us about the possibility of seniors being able to earn the privilege last period as well. I think the senior class and senior classes moving forward can thank Sarah Murphy, uh, who kind of brought it to my attention. So first, um, I went around the school and I got 197 signatures on a petition um, from seniors only, because I wanted to make sure it was senior base from the class of 2016. Um, then I made a nine page um, PowerPoint to present to school committee. And in speaking to her, and, and uh, she spoke to Mr. Lee about it, and we talked it over, 
and decided that it would be something that we'd be willing to allow the seniors to do. So uh, Sarah had come to see me. She had brought all the names and, and the proposal that they had all put together. Uh, I liked it. I thought it was going to work. Uh, we uh, scheduled a meeting with the school committee where they heard the same argument that she made for, uh, towards me. Uh, and they voted it, so they voted it as part of the policy of the school system. I looked online at so many different articles by Braintree High students about how upset they were with the privileges as they were um, currently, and so I wanted to change them. Um, people had always talked about doing something about them, but never actually done anything about them, so I wanted to change that. I think a lot of people look at senior year, particularly the second semester of senior year, and that's when senior privileges are good for, the second semester as a, an opportunity to reward some very responsible young men and women who have done a great job here at the school. You know, it is something that seniors earn, so if a student doesn't meet an academic requirement or they don't meet an attendance requirement, then they individually sometimes do lose the privilege. So there's three components in order to earn the privilege. They have to be academically eligible, which means they need to have passed five classes and have an average of 70. They need to have met the uh, attendance requirement, which is that they can't have had more than five absences in the previous term, and they need to meet the tardy requirement, which is that they can't have had more than eight tardies. In talking about it and thinking it over, you know, we feel that students are responsible enough if they've earned the privilege, and we kind of treat it, you know, along the same lines as if a student is dismissed. Uh, it was approved by school committee. One of the added benefits, which was kind of nice, that was a good point brought up by Sarah, is that it would help with congestion in the parking lot, which has been something that we've been watching this year as well. I think it's a good thing. I think it's something, um, you know, it's a privilege, so something that they can look forward to, work for. I think it's a good uh, motivation. So far, the first, you know, we, we implemented this starting right after February vacation. So the first, this is the third week, and uh, it's gone really smoothly. Uh, I honestly think it'll be our legacy. <laughs> um, I don't know how much else or what else we have planned for the future to do, um, but this will definitely affect future classes. Sarah Murphy's contributions will leave a lasting impression on BHS and will impact all future senior classes to come. And now it's time for our exciting episode of Are You Smarter Than a Teacher? It's time for Braintree High School's Are You Smarter Than a Teacher? And here's your host, Matt Corrigan. Welcome to Braintree High's Are You Smarter Than a Teacher? Where the students and teachers go head to head competing for the title of champion. I'm your host, Matt Corrigan. Let's, let's meet our teacher. Ms. O'Dwyer is a science teacher here at Braintree High. She has been teaching for three years and wishes to continue on with her career. Ms. O'Dwyer, do you believe that you are smarter than a student? Absolutely. Let's see who our challenger is. Our challenger is a feisty redhead, Aiden Doherty. He is in junior year of high school and is a part of the Braintree Boys wrestling team. Aiden, do you feel as though you are smarter than a teacher? I am partially confident. Our game consists of two sections, each section containing four main topics, Braintree history, English literature, pop culture, and science. A wild card question will also be thrown into the mix. In the first round, each question will be worth 10 points. In the second round, each question will be worth 20 points. If a contestant rings the bell and fails to answer correctly, then the opponent can steal the point. Are our contestants ready? Ready yeah. to go. For our first topic is Braintree history. Recently, Braintree streets were covered with blue, blue and white stamps for the celebration of Braintree's anniversary. What amount of years? 75. Oh, time out. Can you do that? Can you do it before the question's asked? I guess so. <laughs> All right, fine. It's incorrect, though. Yeah. Shoot. 375? Aiden is correct. The right answer is 375 years. For our second question, we have English literature. In William Shakespeare, Shakespeare's play, Macbeth, what is the name of the king which Macbeth kills? Oh. It's all you. <laughs> Banquo? <laughs> Is it like McDuff or something? No. Nope. <laughs> the correct answer is King Duncan. Third section is pop culture. What famous rapper announced that in 2020 he'll be running for president? Kanye West. Correct. What? Miss O'Dwyer is correct. The right answer is Kanye West. <clears throat> the fourth question is science. There are 118 medals on the periodic table. Only one of these are not solid at room temperature. What metal is this? Mercury? Aiden is correct. The right answer is mercury. To finish our first round, we have our wildcard question. 
From the 1937 Disney classic, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, what is the name of the dwarf who wears the purple beanie? Dopey? Correct. Ms. O'Dwyer is correct. The right answer is Dopey. That's the end of the round. How are our contestants doing? Well, Matt, Aiden has 10 points, while Ms. O'Dwyer has 20 points. Mrs. O'Dwyer is in the lead. Let's start round two. Are the contestants ready? Ready. Ready. Question one, Braintree history. The town of Braintree is the birthplace of two presidents. What is the name of one of those presidents? <laughs> John Quincy Adams. Correct. Aiden is correct. The right answer is John Quincy Adams and or John Adams. The second question is English literature. The 1960 classic To Kill a Mockingbird was written by what famous author? Famous author? Harper Lee. Correct. Miss O'Dwyer is correct. The right answer is Harper Lee. For our third question, we have pop culture. <laughs> At the 2016 Grammys, yeah. the song Thinking Out Loud was awarded the best song of the year. Who sings? Ed Sheeran. Correct. Miss O'Dwyer is correct. The right answer is Ed Sheeran. I mean, I was expecting Aiden to get that one. You know, maybe a little bit of redhead. Oh, come on. That's unfair. That's cold. Fourth question, science. In the solar system, we have eight planets. One of these could fit about 1,300 Earths with land. Jupiter? Correct. Aiden is correct. The right answer is Jupiter. <laughs> Final question, it's our wild card. From the 1991 children's cartoon, The Rugrats, what is the name of the diaper-wearing baby whose character is the main focus of the show? Tommy Pickles? Correct. Miss O'Dwyer is correct. The right answer is Tommy Pickles. There you have it. What's the score? The score is 80 to 50 with Miss O'Dwyer as our winner. Congratulations, Miss O'Dwyer. How does it feel to be smarter than a student? Feels awesome. Good game, Aiden. Okay. Aiden, you really tried your hardest. I can tell you. I don't want the showing up on TV. <clears throat> this tape is going nowhere. I want it burned. My name is Miss O'Dwyer, and I'm smarter than a student. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Join us next time on Are You Smarter Than a Teacher? That's all we have for this episode of WAP TV. Join us next time for more news regarding BHS. I'm Brendan. And I'm Emily. And, and this, this is, is WAP TV. TV.